Hello everyone, this is Lori, the crafter in the mitten. Today I'm going to be going over how to create a cover for a junk journal. It's going to look like this. Actually, we're going to be creating this particular junk journal cover. Well, hi, this is Lori. I'm the crafter in the mitten. And I decided to start out showing everyone how to start with the basics of making a junk journal or an art journal, depending on what you want to call it. Um, so I'm using a basic Ritz box. You can use any kind of, any kind of box, cereal box, um, anything that you can find. So just, um, whatever you have around your house, nothing fancy, nothing, no, nothing special. And this one here, I've already cut the flaps off. So on this one, you notice the flaps here. So I took a pair of these utility scissors and I just simply cut these off like such. You can use, if you don't have these, you can use a regular pair of scissors, not, whatever you have, use. I got these at Harbor Freight for like a dollar. And when I seen them, I thought, hmm, I could probably use those for my crafts so that way I can cut things that aren't, um, you know, so I don't mess up my good ones. So anyway, that's what I did. So I went ahead and did this this box here so you wouldn't have to watch me do the whole thing. And then the um, journal we're going to make, the cover is going to be four and a half inches by seven and a half um, for the back side and the front side. And then the spines can be one and a half by seven and a half. And I'll have these measurements written down in the description. So you can, uh, anyway, you can take a screenshot of that or whatever if you need to. But it can be any size you want, actually. But I just want to make it smaller for the first one that I do with you. Because I figured we could use this 12 by 12 paper. Um, scrapbooking paper. This is some Tim Holtz. And this is um, something I got at uh, Joanne's. I can't remember the brand. But I'll put that in the description in case anyone's interested. I don't even know if they still sell it. But anyway, I figured I'd have this as the outside. And I haven't decided if I was going to have this on the inside or this on the inside. We'll decide when we get that far. <laughs> but don't worry about it at the moment. So anyway, when we're going to cut this piece of cardboard down, I have a real fancy smancy here um, cutter. It's, um, it's by Fiskars. Looks like this. Now, if you don't have anything this heavy duty, this is great for cutting cardstock and or if you want to cut like five, ten pieces of paper, it, it's great for that. But you might have something old school, like this little Cricut cutter that I've literally had, I think, 15, 20 years. I mean, I've had this thing forever, and it's still on its first blade. It's dull, of course. And then if you don't have anything like that, I just want to show you this real quickly for an alternative. Today's getting a, a self-healing cutting mat. And I have like a blade, and then you can just always take your your ruler after you've measured out the measurements, and you can just you know drag this like the utility blade across like such. Oh, that's not too straight, but anyway, I'm gonna cut that anyway. But you get the idea. So in other words, use what you have. Worst case scenario, you could always um, measure it all out. Draw your lines. But I say seven and or four and a half. You can't even find my pencil. So you could just measure out four and a half. Four and a half here. And you could always, worst case scenario, you could draw this out. In other words, just draw from here to here, draw your line. And you could use just a pair of scissors. So, like I said, nothing fancy. Just use what you have. The idea here is to just have fun. Be creative. I thought we would start out making junk journals. Um, because um, it doesn't cost very much, if anything. Just some basic stuff. Stuff you have around the house. That's why a junk journal is basically called junk journals. Things that you would throw away. That you can make a little book out of. And then... I'll be eventually going into art journaling and um, 
and things like that. Some mixed media. Uh, I like both mixed media and junk journals, and I can't never make up my mind which one I want to concentrate on. So I figured, you know what? How about if I just mix the both of them together? So you're going to see me get a little creative inside of books and different things as we go. But today, we're just going to start out with the basics. So I'm going to head and cut this, and then after this is all, all these pieces are cut, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I have my um, covers, my, uh, yeah, front and back covers cut from my cracker box. And here's the spine. So I ended up going with seven and a quarter because, I don't know, when I cut it, I made a mistake. So I did have seven and a half, but whatever. It's neither here nor there. But I wanted to do this size or smaller size than, um, than sometimes I do because I wanted to be able to do the whole cover on one 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper because I figured if you're just starting out making these you probably have the size of paper um so that's why I decided to start out with this so I wouldn't be piecing it here's um my inspiration here is a book that I made um this is actually my um passwords book that I made because I, I can't remember my passwords to save my soul so I, I made this password book here and I have these different pages like this let me know in the comments if you would like some printables um, so you can make your own password book and we can make a password book together. And I got tabs here with, you know, like crafting and whatever, I you know, the different things that I have so I can find the passwords. So anyway, and this is um, the spine we're going to do. It's a three-hole um, pamphlet stitch. And this one you can say use two pieces of paper. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to make, keep it simple, something like that, and roughly that size. So, I, cause I use one sheet of, um, scrapbook paper on the outside and one on the inside. So anyway, I'm going to leave this the full length of the 12 inches. So we have enough to fold up over the sides. And then we're going to leave a little gap here between, um, the front and the back. So the book can fold in and out easily. If you notice on this one, it folds pretty good, but not not flat like I really want it to. This, you know, it goes like that. It's pretty good, but I want to see if I can get completely open. So that's the idea here. And then this is a uh, seven and three quarters. So I probably will do these. I want to say hmm, probably be about nine inches from here to here. Something like that, like I said, it doesn't have to be precise, just so you can fold this in like that, the corners in. Anyway, I'll be right back. Let me cut this. And then, oh yeah, and then the inside piece of paper, what I do with it. Anyway, I'll get that cut as well. That way, I know you guys don't need to watch me cut a piece of paper. I'm sure we all know how to do at least that much. Um, anyway, I'll be right back. So now I have our paper. I've got it cut out. And I have our, um, the cardstock here, or the uh, cracker box, uh, measurements. I cut it, uh, I'll just let the whole width, that's right. <laughs> I remember saying that to you before. So, so we have the whole width. And then I decided to cut it, um, let's see, nine inches. So, because remember, these are seven and a quarter, so it's almost an inch on either side here. So I wanted to have plenty of border around here so I can fold it in neatly. And then I went ahead and cut this sheet while I was at it. That once we have this all folded in, this will be our inside. And I think that will work out good. Put that up there like that. Anyway, so that'll be the inside sheet. Either this side or this side. I can't decide which. <laughs> you know, so many decisions. I spend more time trying to figure out what paper I want to use, and this and that. When I was getting ready to make this video, I'm not kidding you. I must have spent an hour trying to figure out what paper I wanted to use. Well, I had this one paper pack in mind. Of course, of all the paper packs I have, I couldn't find that one. Because I thought I'd make a kind of a more modern um, journal. It had, um, it had like cactus and cactus flowers and zigzags and, and like that. Only because most people do make the vintage um, journals, which I really love vintage journals. I love them all. So I just thought, well, maybe somebody didn't really like vintage because you can find a lot of vintage versions of this 
you know, on YouTube or on other websites, but it really doesn't matter because I'm basically just wanting to show you how to do this and whatever type of paper, however you want to decorate it, it's yours. It's your personality. It's whatever you like. So then I also decided to go ahead and go with this Tim Holtz paper because it's this is the wallflowers paper and this one's pretty easy to find. So if you really like this one, you know, so hey, you can, you know, some people, they see somebody using something like, oh, I really like that. What is it? That's what that is. And then I said, this other paper that I'm doing for the inside, it's something I got at Joann's. I can't remember the the brand name of it, but I'll, I'll put it in the description below, but I don't even know if that pack is still available or not. Um, but anyway, I'll do my best. Like I said, though, you don't have to find exactly what I have anyway. You just use what you have. Use what you like. It doesn't really matter. Now, I'm going to go ahead and glue these down. I learned on someone's channel, and I'm sorry, I would love to give everybody credit from every place I've learned to do anything. I just honestly don't remember. But anyway, someone said, if you use glue stick and like a tacky glue or you know a wet glue that it gives you a few moments to move this around to adjust it and it really works i really like doing it that way because i just get better results that way so we're, i'm going to do it show you that way and then i did the old credit card uh whoops i'll be smoothing this out this is a it's not even a gift card or a credit card it's someone trying to sell us hearing aids is it you know, you get $850 gift card. Yeah, well, those hearing aids must be awfully expensive if they were going to give you $850 off. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get some glue stick on this. So I do it pretty well. This too, it helps without having, um, I notice when I use this glue stick, you don't get the, um, like, glue marks. You know how sometimes if you ever glue anything down to a piece of paper, you get, like, where the glue bead is? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of that. So this kind of helps alle alleviate that. And then I really like this tacky glue here. Yeah, I'm not like into one kind of glue over another. So whatever works for you. This isn't fussy. This this glue isn't too expensive. Well, I don't know. I think I paid like seven dollars for this. The price went up a lot. I had a bottle almost twice this size. That I had gotten at Walmart for like three dollars and fifty cents or somewhere in that ballpark, and then all of a sudden I noticed that price went up on it. The next time I needed it, but anyway, who knows? Okay, so this just happens to have a line going across, which is perfect because what I usually do is I just measure up like an inch because I have an inch on either side, and then just so I can kind of have it straight. I mean, it's not super. You know, it's not rocket science here, so it's not like really finicky. So I'm just going to splice this down, make sure I allow myself enough on this edge here over the right-hand side. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so I'm going to place that down, try and keep it lined up with that. Oops. Oopsie, it's sliding around, which part of it's because of, um, um, oh, I got that glue stick, so it's a little or slipperier. Or maybe it could be the wet glue. I don't know. It's a little on the slippery side, but it doesn't really matter, like I said. And even there's glue coming off the edge. It's all right. It's all right. It doesn't really matter because this is going to be folded over anyway. So that just lets me know it's put down pretty well. Okay. The other thing you want to make sure you do. Now, this cardboard is pretty thin. Um, I have a thicker cardboard that I like to make for uh, use for journals, but beings were making this little one, a beginner's one. I just wanted to use whatever I thought someone might have because it's not really that critical because plus this, both pieces of this um, scrapbook paper, it's on the heavy side. So it, it's gonna have enough stability. But what I really like to use, and I have to show you, I have dogs. I have three big dogs. I have a lab. I have one that's half lab and have German Shepherd and I have a St. Bernard. <laughs> so they go through a lot of dog bones. But anyway, this dog bone box, it's cardboard. I don't know if you can tell. It's really nice and thick. It's awesome. It's 
and by the time you you put your paper on you can put cloth on this or scrapbook paper whatever it's it's a nice sturdy book cover so i like this so anyway i just wanted to show you like the variety of different boxes that you could use um, for it so i'm going to go ahead and glue these down press this down and then we'll do the and i'll show you how to fold this in and everything so i'm gonna oh, come on screen or not here so i'll pop it so I'm gonna glue this down ah. i don't remember if i introduced myself or not but i'm lori i guess i believe i said i, I introduced myself and I'm, I'm the crafter in the mitten and I need my um, a channel that, well, because I have a blog, and it's named that as well. But I came up with the name because, um, well, I'm from Michigan. So that's where the In the Mitten is. It's in Michigan. And I lived down south. I lived in North Carolina for nine years. And you always hear, you know, a lot about, oh, southern hosp hospitality, southern magazines, you know, southern, you know, just the... Uh, you know, like Southern ways of doing things, decorating, cooking, etc. Well, a lot of us Midwesterners are really good cooks and crafters and all of that as well. And I didn't want to name it something like, I don't know, Crafter Up North or, or whatever. So anyway, I decided to go with Crafter in the Mitten. So that's where I got that name at. So, and then I got one more here to do. It's already buckling for some reason, but I don't know. Oh, it was that was really dusty there a second ago. If you see me wiping it off, I'm like, where did that dust come from? Oh, the dust from the dog bones. So <laughs> be mindful of that. Yeah. So when you go to use something like that, you might sometimes you have to brush something off. I have a little brush here. Make sure I have all that doggy bone stuff gone. Okay. And my glue. And it's not a rocket scientist, but rocket science, just get it in, get it on there. And just my main thing here is just to have these, um, you know, kind of level straight like a straight line and i'm trying to leave a gap here because it makes it so much easier when you go to um fold the book in and out you'll see what i mean a little later so that gap's a little wider than that one uh, like i said it's handmade so you're not going to have everything perfect trust me but you know that's the beauty of it it's is that handmade part of it and you know that, it's the process that you enjoy anyway so it doesn't have to be perfect don't worry if your work isn't perfect. Mine rarely, well, mine is never perfect. I shouldn't say rarely. It, it is absolutely never perfect. But, you know, there's happy accidents that happen. This is what you do with it that matters. Okay. So we have that in there. Let's see how I can fold this. Oops, it's not dry enough, that side. But I'm going to go ahead and fold that. Pull this other side. Maybe I should let it dry a little bit better. Now it's not gonna um, matter too much like if you have a little air bubble in them or something. I might wanna put a little glue in there. You can't see the air bubble in there anyway, but what I mean is, um, by the time I get this up, get together and get the other sheet on there, it's not going to matter, really. And this is the other glue I use. It's got this little tip you can get. That come, um, oh, it, uh, it comes with it. If you buy this size, um, a lot of people use glitter glue. Well, I was trying to find glitter glue, and this is the beginning when the pandemic started, and I couldn't find it. Every place I see online, they were sold out. Anyway, i seen this barely art glue advertised. And I said, well, that looks like it's comparable to it. And they said it didn't freeze. 
so they could send it to you in the winter. Um, but I went ahead and got it. Now I've never ever used glitter glue, but I was gonna get it for the first time. So I don't know how I can compare it. So I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna weigh one kind of glue against the other because I can't give you an honest opinion. But I'm happy with this one. This one's good for getting in those little little areas. I've used this um, glue. I have a Cricut machine and I was making some paper Christmas ornaments. And so if that came in handy for some little teeny places that I needed to glue, that it really came in handy. And, and it's held up really well. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, the glue is good. <laughs> At least it does what I need it to do. And then I always make sure I um, put this needle back in here. So it doesn't dry out. Okay, so let me see if I can fold this one now. Hopefully that's dry enough, I think it is. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Okay, I think that's gonna be a, a pretty cute cover, front and back. Some of this paper was, parts of this paper were grungier than others. And I didn't really want it grungy, grungy. I don't mind a little bit of grunge. But I, uh, anyway, so I picked that part of it. See, this other part, you can see it's more grungy. And I don't, know, I don't mind a little. That's the back anyway. By the time we decorate the front of it, uh, it's going to be gorgeous anyway. It's, it, it's Tim Holtz paper, come on. <laughs> it's going to be really pretty when we're all done. It's hard to imagine something finished when you're on this, at this stage of it though. At least it is for me. Okay, so now what I, you're gonna do is you're gonna take and fold this edge up. You wanna fold it up and get it nice and crisp. Let me grab, I got coffee bowl and folders. Let me use this one. Artesna. I have got a few things from them. Um, these were like five or six dollars. I think I got them on sale or with a coupon code or whatever, um, which isn't bad. They're plastic, they're not real bone. The only thing I, didn't like about them is I had to take a nail like a emery board. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but there's like where the little plastic parts are. And it was sharp around here. Anyway, I just had to sand them down a little bit. But that's that's the only thing I didn't like about them. And um yeah I have a Martha Stewart one which I don't mind, except for, let me show you here. And I use it too, but this one, the, it's more curvy. So I just, well, I guess it's working pretty well. But sometimes I just have a, I don't know, I just like this, if this is flatter. I just like, the, I don't know. Depends what I'm using it for, which one I like better, to be honest with you. It's like anything. You just, whatever you happen to like, Go for it. If you don't have a bone folder, don't worry. You can still do this. You don't have to have a bone folder. I just happen to have accumulated a lot of craft supplies. Believe me, I did not start out with a lot of craft supplies. As a matter of fact, that was probably the number one reason or the number one thing that attracted me to doing junk journals. It's because I really wanted to craft. And at the time, well... It's always the time. Well, I mean, at the time. I don't always have a lot of money to spend. Um, and I'm sure most of you are like that, too. Or you might have the money, but you have something else you got to pay for as well. Like, you know, get a new vacuum cleaner or whatever. There's always something that you're not expecting to have to spend money on it. But anyway, so... Um, anyway, that's what got me into it. Because I can make it literally a junk mail or whatever I want it to do. And just, just something to be creative. So like, yeah, so if you don't have a bone folder, you know, try credit card or get old used up gift card or, or some kind of fake gift card that they're gonna give you a whole bunch of money off to get you to buy something, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, so just use one of those. All right, so now we got, this is, our crease is all made. Let me go ahead and fold this like this as well. And then this as well. Now what I do, um, because it's going to get bulky, 
is I take, oh, I've got a million pairs of scissors, but my favorite pair of scissors to use for fussy cutting are these old hair cutting scissors. I used to be a hairdresser way back in the day. I don't want to tell you when because it would age me, but, um, but they were really cheap ones. So, I, you know, you're not supposed to cut paper with them, but uh, I've got other ones to cut hair. But anyway, just come up here and just make a little V just to cut some of that bulk out. Just so it doesn't seem so bulky. You could do this on either side. You don't want to do it on this side too. And don't worry, this is going to be covered up with that paper, the other piece of paper that we, um, you know, put on the inside. So that'll be covered up. See, no problem. You won't even see, don't even see any of it right there. Not even a little line. Okay. So, this, like I said, it just takes, oh yeah, you've... <laughs> I, you, I wish you could feel it so you can see what I was talking about, but it, yeah, it makes a difference. Okay, so we got that done. And now we're going to go over here and we're going to cut some of this off because see how bulky that would be? That just, no, that doesn't work so well. So you're going to want to cut some of this like here, like come in here. Now you don't want to cut right to this tip. You just want to just miss that tip. So I come in about like that. I'd say you want to like a sixteenth of an inch see how that, I don't know if you can see it that well. Let me see if I can pull it up here for you to see better. Um, it takes the bulk away. See how it's bulky here? You don't want that. You want it to fit more like that. So I'll do the same thing on this side. Let me come over here. Here as well. So all four corners. It's good. Up here too. All right. All right. So next up is to really glue these down. It doesn't really matter if you do the like the upside, downside, and then the sides. But personally, I like doing the sides and then doing these down. I, it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's just a preference, like anything else. Okay, so I think I'm going to put some glue stick on that. Just so I know it's, it. there's glue, glue all the way touching it, even, you know, in case there's an air bubble. But it doesn't really matter. Make sure you get on the edge there. Okay, so I'm gonna put this down. And this seems like it doesn't really wanna stay st stuck down very well. Sometimes you just have to work with it. I do have some little clamps. I got these at the dollar store. So if you don't have any clamps, don't worry. You can just put something heavy on it for a minute or two. Just enough to keep those down. Yeah. There's a little ear pocket there. And then I got this here. Uh, yeah, I don't have to have that there too long. Just just for right now. So let me get on this end. You went a pretty fair amount of glue on there. But 
again, don't worry too awfully much about how precise and all that is because we're going to have this piece of paper go over it. So that's not going to um, matter too awfully much. Now this side seems to want to stick down a little bit better than that other side for some reason. Hmm, who knows? But that glue dries pretty quickly, so I'm just going to... Just, just for a moment here. Just because I can. I, just because I have them. If you don't have clamps, like I said, don't worry about it. You'll eventually gather enough craft supplies where you'll have a bunch of stuff like me. <laughs> if you've seen this craft room, you'd be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a disaster. And I, I actually picked it up a little bit today. Um, just to get a little organized. But I'm the kind of, I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of crafter where I have my craft supplies in that more than one room because like at night I'm like when to sit on my bed and watch tv or something I just want to chill but I want to do something a little on the creative side not like a major project or anything so I'll grab something and and you know we make my little project and the next night I was oh I want to make that next thing I know my room is full of stuff <laughs> so I know it's crazy so then I gotta Clean it out, and that's what I, I did for it today is getting the stuff out of my bedroom and bringing it back into here. And then I work at home. I'm really blessed to have a corporate job where I can um, work at home. So my office is, you know, my work off, my job office, what do you want to call it? Um, so I have my work computer and a personal one in there. And anyway, my Cricut machine has to be connected um, because I have an older computer anyway, so I had to have it physically connected anyways, um, to it. So <laughs> I have craft supplies in there and then when I have tea meetings, sometimes they see my mask. Anyway, at least they know I don't just sit around. That one's, that's staying down pretty well. Let's see. I think you'll see, see it's, it's, it's nice and... I'm just putting this just in the corner just because I have the clips. I can do that for a minute. Maybe this side. Now, this glue, it says magic blue, but it's never been blue. It's always been just white, so I'm I don't know if I got a dud one <laughs> or it's an older one and it lost its color. I don't know, but it works. I got it on Amazon because um, where I live, there isn't that I have to drive at least 30 miles to, to go to a craft store and I don't, and which is Joanne's. And we've kind of recently got a Hobby Lobby, but I don't think either one of those stores sell this. I've never seen it in there. I don't know if Michael's does or not. But anyway, so Amazon it is. Okay. I'm going to let that rest for just a little bit. And then I have to, which is the front and the back. Okay, that's the back. This is the front. Okay. Now, the decision of the day. Do I do it this way? Or do I do it this way? Which do you guys think looks better? These colors match better. But I really love that color. <laughs> mm, I think I'm going to go with... I think I'm going to go with that just because I think it just blends in better. Okay. We're going to do that. Okay, so... I'm going to glue this, put kinds of glue on this. So, on this, this time with you guys, I am just going to make the cover. I'm not going to do any decorating. I'm not going to gather any of the um, papers for the signature or any of that. It's just simply the cover. Um, because this video probably forever long and it's, if you can't tell, it's my first one and I don't want to get overwhelmed. So we're going to just do this 
And then the next time we get together, I am going to gather some pages or some papers so we can make some signatures. And then we will um, sew those signatures in. Like I said, I'm going to keep this journal kind of on the simpler side, not get it too, um, oh, what's that word I want? Anyway, too too much stuff in it, or, uh, oh man, I can't think of that word. Anyway, I'm going to keep it simpler anyway, <laughs> my point being. No, we're going to keep it to the basics. And then, as you watch my channel and things, you'll see we'll get more um, detailed in, in, in that. So, anyway, so here... We're gonna line that up like so. See how the edges okay. um see how it just covers where it was folded, the inside page. So what I'm gonna do first though, while it's wet, because I kinda have to do it now because I'll regret it if I don't. I'm gonna fold that over while it's wet, get that down. See it went over the edge there. And then see how this is where I always have a hard time. <laughs> so don't feel bad if you have a hard time with this part. And... Okay. This always seems like the paper is a little... Uh, oh, I don't explain it. It's like a bubble in there. Oops. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put that bone folder in there between those two pieces of cardboard. I did this when I was before I did that part, but anyway, this part's fussy. If I ever figure out a good way to do this, I will certainly let you know. To me, this is the hardest part of doing the cover is, is putting that paper in here and see how somehow I it get um, out out of alignment. But that's okay. I can always trim that off. That's that's not a big deal. It's kind of why I made it so wide. Okay, well, now you see the basics and how to do that. And um, I'll fuss with this a little later. So you don't need to watch me fuss with it to get it to be perfect. Anyway, I'll be back with you and we will do the um, signatures. And anyway, if you have any questions or if there's something you want to know how to do, just let me know. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Like this video if you like it. If not, you can thumbs down it, whatever, whatever suits you. Anyway, until later, I'll see you again. Again, this is Lori from the Crafter in the Making.